Good. Just when you mentioned them there, uh, Ken, Jack Steedman, how did you how did you get on with, with Jack? Yeah, years ago. I would like he's uh, he was like my second dad, to be fair. I was there that long. Uh, and funny enough, believe it or not, Andrew Steedman's over here and Ian's over here. Right. And they've invited me up to their uh, coaching schools right. in North Carolina okay. in the summer. And he said, I'll put you to work if you want. So I was like, so I said, right, give me your old man. Is your old man still alive? Yeah, of course he is. Oh, yeah, he's still got his marbles and all that. I said, give me his phone number. I phoned him last week. <laughs> right. And I kidded on his own call. Hi, is that Mr. <laughs> Steedman? Right. He went, yeah. I said, uh, how's it going? Who's that? And he, he sounded the exact same. And I said, it's, it's only coil here. It's not only coil, he said. I said, who do you think it is? And he hummed and hawed and hummed and hawed. And he went, are you serious? And he said, Mr. Reedy. And I went, really? So we had a, I, I couldn't get him off the phone. Yeah. I couldn't get him off the phone. Uh, we were just reminiscing about everything, uh, about all the great games. And, and he would reminisce about when he played. Um, how good he was, you know. And Andrew had warned me, he said, if you get your my dad on the phone, you'll never get him off. And uh, so we had a fantastic conversation and basically just bummed each other up <laughs> <laughs> for about an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, he's living, he's 95, 96 wow. now. Um, still, uh, nice. Nah, he says, I've still got all my marbles and that. He says, I might not be as fit as I was, but I'm still doing okay. And then it was him that said, get your ass over to America and go and see these boys and, and put some of these young kids through their paces. So I'll maybe pop it. It's not that far from me. It's maybe a five hour, six hour drive or something like that. So I, I might pop up and maybe take the family up there for a week and just do some some running about and coaching with the kids. I believe that some of the old Clay Bank guys come over. Maybe yeah, Big, I think Jim over. Does, yeah. Big Jim comes over, doesn't he? Yeah. So I might might even catch up with one or two of them. So um, you know, I know Jack. I get on fantastic. With it. It, not, it's not everybody's cup of tea with what happened with the club, and I can totally appreciate from the from the fans' point of view. Um, I, I I really don't know um, why they're still not in existence at Kilbury. I well, I do and I don't. The, about the old plan of permission for the other ground up in the boulevard, yeah. whether that was whether it was true or whether it was just a uh, to sidestep everyone. But uh, but at the end of the day, business is business. Um, they might have decided as a family just to say, right, okay. <laughs> I think the Bosman thing. We spoke yeah. about that. The Bosman thing killed clubs like Clyde Bank because. Um, that's where the bread and butter came from in transfers. You know, I remember Breakin getting 50 grand for me when they sold me to Falk. I kept them going for a couple of years, two or three yeah. years, without having to do anything. So we spoke about that at length, and, and I think Jack had admitted that the Bosman thing at Snooker, Clay Bank. Mm. Um, but I think from a supporter's, I totally agree from a supporter's point of view, it, they've, they've put them down as, and the whole family down as, as rogues, but I I don't know. I tend to disagree because I had so many happy memories with them. They never done me any wrong. I did a lot of good for them as a club. Um, you know, he's. I, I would have still been there, but I just wanted to. I wanted to retire. Really, I wanted to retire. Um, but I've got so much respect for them. I, I spoke to somebody else about it, but they're talking recently about coaching or signing players. And someone said to him, oh, it, was, it was Mark Shanks that used to be assistant manager at Queen of South, uh, put a post on recently and I said, that's why the Steedmans were so good at unearthing talent and spotting talent and signing talent is because they were prepared to go and stand in a wet, cold, windy Sunday morning, Saturday morning and look at talent. Whereas Mark had said to me, it's all about the laptop brigade now. They mm -hmm. don't even see players before they sign them. And and then Paul Flexney came. Remember Big Flex that played with Clyde? Paul Flexney, said a half. Yeah, can I see a dude? Well, Paul came on to me and he said, I totally agree. He said, Craig Brown came to a Red Blaze Park in Easterhouse in Glasgow, came and watched me under 15 football at schools. 
and uh, inside me because he was prepared to go and stand and watch games. The Steedman's done it all the time. Mm-hmm. And even when talent went down south, uh, if, if bigger English clubs came in and picked talent up and these players didn't actually make it down south, the Steedman's were first to snap them up when they came back up the road mm-hmm. because they knew they were good enough. Paul Harvey is an example. Yeah. Went to Man United, threw the whistle at Fergie. Phew get back up the road you're signing with us <laughs> and this is that's it people are just I, I don't I don't even think people go and watch matches now they're watching a player they do it on video oh mm. let's have a look at him oh, he looks okay what did they do for the other 65 minutes you know what I mean <laughs> so, yeah. so but sorry sorry digress getting back to Jack full respect for him and I think he'd the same for me um, never had any run-ins uh, apart from when I get sent off in the quarterfinals in Scottish <laughs> against Stirling Albion for he'd button a guy but um, <laughs> that was uh, that was the only fallout I ever had with him <laughs> but, uh, yeah glad to see he's still alive and he's still got his marbles and no doubt I'll talk to him again soon mm-hmm.